Welcome back to The Dish with the Paddock Prince, Ned DeRosa, Horse Racing Nation. And David, this is actually the second time you've seen me today. It is. I saw you at the polls. Line was too long for me, so I'll have to go back later. All right. Uh, hopefully it will die down. It did move pretty quick. I, I was nervous I'd be there about an hour, but it was only 20 minutes. Cast my ballot for my favorites, as we both did on Friday and Saturday at Keeneland for the Breeders' Cup. And full disclosure, definitely a brag forthcoming. Maybe it was the fact that this was one of my best Breeders' Cup ever betting-wise, but I thought the racing was very satisfying. I thought it was really. I didn't. I didn't bet well. I didn't. I mean, I didn't. I wasn't terrible, but I didn't have any big hits or anything like that. But I still, I really enjoyed the racing. The turf racing was obviously dominated by the Europeans. I thought even the. I'm sure we'll get into the classic, but that was a really awesome race, especially for the first nine furlongs. I mean, overall, I mean everything went well. I just it was overall a really good weekend. I, I was really, Keeneland did a. They do a good job of hosting. It's it's not the biggest place in the world, but. The weather was super nice. It was really well done, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think uh, there the weather is is very key. I cannot imagine how crowded it would have been if everyone had been seeking cover. But uh, GA really, is, it, it's a great deal um, at Keeneland. I mean, you're on the apron. I know people got there early enough. They were literally at the rail near the finish line. Can't beat that for general admission, obviously, if you want uh, better accommodations or you know, see those options are there too. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I thought they did a great job within the plant. Uh, the racing seemed fair. On Friday, we had both two-year-old races, one from well off the pace, uh, Tyler Gaffleone getting his first of two Breeders' Cup wins ever uh, with Wonder Wheel, great rail ride, and then Forte took the outer route, but both closed. Uh, and I just thought overall it was a it was a fairly run Breeders' Cup, regardless of surface or distance. Yeah, if you would have told me Wonder Wheel was going to come from almost dead last, I would have <laughs> never believed you. But, um, yeah, no, I thought it was fair on both surfaces. Uh, in Italian, almost wired the Philly and Mare turf. Closers won on the turf. There was dirt races where speed held up. There was dirt races where the pass fa paces were fast and they not collapsed, but horses won from off the pace, as you said, in the breeders, uh, the juveniles on Saturday or on Friday. I apologize. Um, the dirt races on Saturday were fair. The sprint race close came from off the pace. Yeah, no, overall, I thought it was fun. And two years ago when they had their COVID year, it felt like everything was speed. So it was nice to see the track um, play fair to the betters and give every horse a fair chance as well. And even the classic winner came from off the pace. He did. That was, I mean, I don't know. I know he won by eight lengths, but for about nine furlongs, that was one of the most exciting, like, races you can watch for nine furlongs. It was just, I mean, for horses going that fast, that and you know, flight line just brushing that horse off. I mean, life is good. I mean, obviously, if if flight line wasn't in the race, life is good would have won the race because he was going yeah, so think, fast. But it was just a real go ahead. Yeah, I was for me, what I'll remember about flight line is he never there was no horse at any point in any of his races that ever ran with him. When Flavian Pratt decided it was time to go the door was slammed and there was no question whatsoever about who was going to win the race. Oh, not even that. Was, I read's quote was funny after the race. He said, I kept trying to get away from the horse. And every time he looked <laughs> back, he said, he said, quote, he said, Oh my God, he's still sitting right there. So that just shows how brilliant his natural speed is because I mean, they sent life as good as hard as possible out of the gate throughout the race and fly line was, looks like he was just in a jog to keep up with him. And then when yeah, he asked they, the button, and the rest is history. And I don't know. I don't even know who came. I don't even know who came third. It was so far back. I know Olympia. It was second. Olympia. Taba. I think Taba did. Yeah, it was a little bit of a joke because, I mean, if you watch that race, you have no clue who's even else in the race once the once life is good dies out. No. Uh, yeah, I agree. And, and I mean, I bet the race I went for it. And, uh, you know, flight line. Obviously, once he dispatched, life is good was pretty clear he was going to win. And, you know, even though I bet uh, the exotic, so I had an interest in who would be behind him. I actually, in my head, was not even thinking about that, which is rare for me. I definitely shade toward I have a bet on. That's what I'm watching. Yeah. Uh, but, and one, but once, you know, it was flight line was probably a few strides past the wire before I realized, oh, what's going on behind him? Maybe I can win my bet. So uh, that, that was just that type Olympiad of Olympiad was 
he was amazing value in that race. If you look back on it, it's amazing yeah. that the three year olds were shorter prices than he was because he no. clearly was the second best older horse on the East Coast all year. And he only had one bad race all year, but I, his value was unbelievable. No, for him race. to be. And then Rich Strike came for. Yeah. No, for Olympia yeah. to be seventh choice. I mean, I definitely understand why he was not bet as heavily as Epicenter or Taba. I get that. But for him to be clearly less bet than Rich Strike or Hot Rod Charlie was incredible to me. Unbelievable. The, the, yeah, that was ridiculous. I, I I get a little bit. I know Epicenter had some physical issues in the race, but even him, I thought he was I thought he was a better horse than him. But I, I guess it's apple to orange. Just Tabor ran a good race. And ob- obviously, honestly, I think Baffert, I mean, you gotta think of like Tabor. I mean, I think he's the only horse out of the race that didn't retire besides Rich Strike, maybe <laughs> Hot Rod Charlie staying in. So I mean the Pegasus Tabor looks like he'll be if he stays in training for a couple months, more months until I guess he's getting a break. I don't know, but he'd be tough in the Pegasus, it appears. No, I mean, even if they give him a break, I mean, the Pegasus two and a half months. So it's not like that's uh, yeah. coming up that quickly. And uh, yeah, uh, he's certainly already a, a thought to be a major player in 2023. Cody's wish uh, is going to stay in training. We'll see what type of distances they target with him. Enough about the good, though. We I always try to balance out what we do. It's a humbling game. What was your worst opinion this past weekend? Worst opinion? Just one? Yeah, well, you're worse. But if you have it, you can share two. Chocolate gelato was pretty bad. Chocolate gelato was pretty bad. I mean, her for I shouldn't have fell for her. For Zeb was, I mean, she won the grade one, but she was distance limited in the race. And then I fell for it. And that, I would have never had Wonder Wheel, though. I was so against Wonder Wheel. And you know what <laughs> else was bizarre, is that, that bizarre about that race was Chop Chop was so overbet in that race. I did not understand the Chop Chop love. But I would I, probably say chocolate gelato was pretty bad. Well, we know mine. Well, she didn't run terrible. No, well, here, here's why I would still say Moira, even though, and I agree, she didn't run terrible. She ran a race, maybe a Great little fifth. far back. But she was eight to one, which means she wins that race. You know, for it to be fair, she'd have to win that race eleven percent of the time. And I, you know, after the fact, seeing, I mean, in Italian, I thought ran spectacular. Tuesday, depending on which speed figure you use, first nut says she ran as fast as flight line. We know that's ridiculous. But even looking at some of the other. Well, you know, it's on the turf. Flight line wanted to beat her on the turf. (laughs) I don't know. Regardless, she ran a great race Uh, track record at a funky distance. But admittedly, Moira is not winning that race 11 percent of the time. So from that standpoint, as bullish as I was on her, I'll say, well, maybe I was a little over the top, needed a bigger price. Uh, otherwise, you know, I don't think I had too many huge whiffs other than if I had it to have back, I'd probably pick a few more euros in the turf races. Um, yeah, I didn't think, I agree. I didn't think Aiden I was coming with his best at all. So his three wins were complete whiffs for me. Um, but you know, you, you can't get them all right. So. No, I saw a um, – there was a video of Aiden. I don't know if it was Wednesday or Thursday they interviewed him. Of course, I saw this Sunday that he said meditate was his best chance. Like, So I I didn't I didn't bet the horse or pick him to win. I Horses like that, I, I mean, they were in low value, two to one, but the way right. they won was so easily, so easy. I mean, they're, yeah, if you look back on it, this is going to be interesting because next year when they go to Santa Anita, they're going to be – I think it's Santa Anita next year, right? Santa Anita? Yep. You know, the people are going, oh, you got to bet the Europeans. But I feel like Keeneland is a true style European turf course for them. It's super firm. The weather's better for them. So it'll be something to look out for next year, what Euros come. Because I saw Aiden O'Brien did say that he loves Keeneland, and that's why he brought a lot of his um, big shots. And just instead of sending, you know, a couple on the plane because they have the right. option. No, and he, uh, I mean, he'll even send horses to like the, the Coolmore Mile formerly Shadwell. We've seen him in the First Lady, the QE2. So Keeneland's a place he supports even outside of, of the Breeders' Cup. And Arlington used to be another of those places, of course. That's uh, But we digress. Uh, looking ahead, we have – I saw you had a bunch of stuff, uh, packages and whatnot. Churchill is back this week. Of course, Aqueduct and Aqueduct. And then you've already started uh, thinking about Gulfstream come December 26th. 
Yeah, I like how Gulfstream cut their meat down. So I'm going to do the whole Gulfstream meat this year because I feel like when it started December 1st or into November, it was such a dragged out meat. It sounds like Gulfstream's really trying to pull the efforts back to bring it to back to how it was, I don't know, six, seven years ago when it was truly almost like a Saratoga, like two months of racing. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm going to, I'm going to dig in and do, I think I'm going to do Gulfstream for the entire meet this year. I know they run five days a week, but it's only a, we got three month meet this year instead of four. So. Right. All right. And Aqueduct. Like and Aqueduct uh, also, and the yeah. So you, yeah, will it be Aqueduct and Gulfstream, or it's just all Gulfstream. Yeah, I'll do Aqueducts. Yeah, I'll do Aqueducts. You know, that's my that's my that's my home track. I got to stay where I belong at Aqueducts. I have heard very good things about the atmosphere there in the winter. Uh, true, true uh, racing fans braving those elements. Uh, speaking of winter, at least late fall, uh, we do have a reminder that the symposium is the first week of December. Uh, 5th through the 7th. I am very much looking forward to being out there. And for those of you that enjoy the witty banter of racing's uh, management, there's no better place to be than the symposium. And David, if you happen to be watching on live stream while you're uh, going editors for North Oldham High School, want me to ask live, shoot me a text. I will do that. I think we... Um... I think we play what the fifth to seventh is that a what is that it's like the, the first f- full week weekend? of december tuesday through thursday no yeah yeah we I th- yeah we play on we play on that tuesday so i'm gonna have to be i'm gonna have to be focused on the mustangs that week but if i can think of a question <laughs> i will that will definitely pass it along to you as a coach do you watch more tape of your team back or the competition it's a good question it depends if we played them last year I watch our game from last year with probably the other team, but it just depends who we're playing. Cause a lot of teams in high school don't, if they have the same coach, they don't switch anything. It's the same thing. Mm. Like I'm not going to say anything on, you know, I don't want to, I don't know how many high school coaches are watching the um, paddock. Be dish, surprised. There's one school that we, there's one school we play every year that I know every single play because I played them when I played and they have not changed one play since wow. we've played that since, since I've ever played against them. So it's just so it's kind of like the 30 year biology teacher that still uses the same tests. Yep. With the same exact, they don't even change the calls 53, 54, 55, same <laughs> things. Just, they're all the same place. So it, it just depends on the opponent, but we have a lot of new people on our schedule this year. So I'm going to have to watch a lot more film this year. Now do you all swap tape played. or because of places like max preps and stuff, do you just use that? No, teams can request two games, or if you know the coach, be like, hey, just send me your last three games. I'll send you your Because it's a really stupid thing that you can't just access them by yourself. Because in college and NBA, you can just go on Synergy and just click the team's game. So you just technically you got to request them or send them in high school. Mm-hmm. All right. Sounds about as efficient as horse racing. Man, yeah, that's, no, that's a whole other story. I think, I think high school basketball is a little more efficient than um, horse racing. Yeah, at least uh, get you the replays you need uh, in a somewhat timely manner. All right, well, we will look forward to Churchill and Aqueduct this week. Plenty of Thanksgiving action in a few weeks. Obviously, we'll be talking about that as it comes up. Uh, any other parting thoughts on Breeders' Cup? No, what about the human connections? Who is your best? Who is your best? Oh, I just hit the wrong button. So we got to go back. What about your um, human connections? Well, uh, yeah, Breeders' Cup. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like best jockey trainer. Who'd you thought was? Oh, the best? okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, Appleby and O'Brien are hard to to deny. I mean, you know, Sadler only had the one win, but uh, clearly there were some issues with flight line in terms of the spacing of his races, and for him to, you know, for him to get him to this point to run like that, I, I definitely deserve think deserve accolades, and then. Uh, you know, I'd say probably Irad, maybe race for race. Bill Mott. Oh, Bill Mott, that's a great point too. Uh, what Bill Mott had a good two? weekend. Yeah, and then he won plus, the race after the classic, so he plus he second in the, the classic. Mott. Yeah, um, you know, I thought Tyler Third in the ride with Wonder Wheel. That rail ride was it was impressive, especially since Is that was the only Churchill jockey. Style. What's that? The only Churchill jockey that won a race. You know, you know the Kentucky contingent had a had had a not so good Breeders' Cup. Yes. Yeah, I was now I'm thinking about it. I don't even remember. Did Hernandez and some of those guys even have mounts? 
Now it's uh, you know for the purses we run for here, uh, and really, I mean the, the quality is solid, no doubt about that. But uh, it, it did seem like the Kentucky locals did not get a lot of love. Yeah, I didn't feel like it either. But yeah, I agree with you. I thought the obvious you know Brian Appleby. I thought Bill Mott. I mean Pletcher had two wins. So yeah, I thought a lot of the guys showed up. That you know Chad Brown was. He won a race, but man, if he didn't win that race, it would have been a disappointing weekend for him. But he did get got that win. But I agree with you, everything you said. I thought I read had a good good weekend. Joel did not win a Breeders' Cup race. No, neither did Jose, right? Did Jose have a mount? He, had a see Jose? he, he was winless for uh he's not he's still winless for Breeders' Cups in Kentucky. I didn't know that. He gave no. the ride of the year last year on um Pizza Bianca, and then he comes back with a goose egg. It's tough with uh, tough I mean, game. these. Literally, are the 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 best in the world every race. So um, it's going to happen, I guess. Yep. But we'll do it again next year. Oh, I got. I love Sandy. It's favorite track to go to. All right. Well, hopefully, I'll see you there then, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. All right. That's the Prince. This was the Dish. This is Horse Racing Nation. Good luck, everybody.